Charlie Farnell here, and thanks for listening to Lead Your Best Life. This particular topic today is so important, whether you're a parent, whether you're a manager, whether you're a, a, a business owner, no matter what part of your life you're in, this is so important. And what I'm talking about here is active listening. Stay tuned. Well, why would I be so interested and passionate about this area of active listening? Well, first of all, let's start with some data. According to a 2020 study by M-Train, one in 10 employees say they do not trust that their leaders would listen if they made a complaint. In other words, they don't feel safe. They don't feel supported. There's also other data to show that the more a leader interrupts and doesn't let a person finish what they're saying, doesn't want to hear their point of view, the less they feel connected, the less they feel a glue, the less they feel supported, and the less they actually want to work with that leader. So if you're a boss, a parent, your job in the first instance is to hear the other person out hear the person out. Um, I'm looking at a whole range of data here, uh, which shows listening increases your capacity as a leader. Being open to feedback from new areas and ideas, hear them out. Point two, listening shows that you care. Really listening to someone shows you care about what they're saying. So you build an environment of trust. We say trust is the glue that holds the team together, be it a sporting team, be it a family, be it a business, no matter what the size of the business. Listening is such an important part of building trust. Question is, how good are you at it? If I asked your staff, how good are you at it? I wonder what they would say. If I were you, the first thing I'd do is go and ask, do a little survey. Want to get a copy of it? Ask me um, a little survey of how good a listener am I? How safe is it for you to contribute ideas? Or, or am I the guru and you just have to listen to me as if I'm at the top of the pyramid? I love that statement which says, I didn't get to the top of the food chain to be a vegetarian. You know, I didn't get to be a boss to have to listen to you guys. Wrong, this poor ego is starting to creep in when you hear voices like that. Listening helps you comprehend the situation so you truly can go deep. And of course, the Japanese in the quality area talk about the five whys. Why, why, why? Go deeper. Why? And why is that? And why is that? So you get to the root cause of the situation, to the root of the problem rather than the superficialities of the problem. Listening helps you better understand your business, better understand your family, better understand your sporting team. And what I do want to do here is go to a fantastic article in Forbes magazine where they talk 15 ways leaders can hone their active listening skills and why they should. So let me just give you some of them. Point one, be fully present to gain a deeper understanding. Being fully present means being in the now, looking the person in the eye rather than thinking about the next meeting you've got to go to or the person on the other side of the room or what's just happened. It's called being present in the now. As a leader, it demonstrates your interest in the other person's point of view, helps you gain trust and enable a deeper understanding and connection Uh, understanding of the issues um, and the different situation. Be fully present. Be fully present. Stop the mind's chatter. I've been told one of my coaching clients the other day, mate, can you be present? I can see your brain jumping all over the place. And if that's the way you are with me, I bet that's the way you are with your people as well. So practice being present. Um, Point two, don't respond in the moment. I had a client is a knee-jerk reaction no matter what was said to them. They want to give a solution right there and then and be the one giving the solution. So one great way to practice active listening is by not responding in the moment. Just take in what you're hearing, thank others for their thoughts and tell them you'd like to think about it for a day or two or a few days to digest their great input. Then schedule a follow-up time for when you can then close the loop. So you collect more data or have a think about it, but stop jumping to conclusions and jumping at shadows. Um, people start to realize he's making it up on the spot. He just wants to get rid of me. He just wants to fob me off. He's not wanting to give me or this idea the attention it really deserves. So, And we know people who do that. I know people that do that. It's like they think they're smart by just dealing with it and talking rubbish. Uh, and everyone can tell. You know, people pick up on your energy and vibe. They know when you're like a duck paddling rapidly under the water but trying to look cool above. Point three, practice humility. Practice humility, humility, human humility, humor, humility. Practice the phrase, what I hear you saying is, 
um, what am I missing or what am I getting wrong? This phrase helps the leader listen actively to extract key insights. To work, it requires humility. And what we know, level five leadership, if you look at the book Good to Great, level five leaders are full of humility, not ego bound. So first, first to believe that you might not have understood and then to trust that there might be more that's worth listening to. So what is it I hear you saying? I hear, mm-hmm. What I hear you saying is, paraphrase it, and what am I missing? What am I getting wrong? So you paraphrase, we call it parrot phrasing. This listening plus humility combination grows the psychological safety that's essential for high-performing teams. And I literally, in one of my closing sessions the other day, uh, the, the senior manager said, you know, I'm blessed, I'm blessed to work with such great people. And early on, when she was just starting with the team, she says, look, I'm new, I'm new, I'm going to need your help, as distinct from I'm new, I'm a guru. So be willing to practice humility. Stop pretending you've got your act and your life together. Vulnerability is actually power, as distinct from pretending you have no vulnerability. And you've seen world leaders, or I don't even want to mention, um, pretending they have no, no faults. Point four, shift into a collaborative mindset. True confidence, as, a false to the, as opposed to the false brash confidence of the hustler, oh, we know some of those, includes humility, curiosity, and the willingness to hear other viewpoints. Tell me more. Explain that point of view to me. Leaders who get this shift to creative, collaborative, and appreciative mindset, showing you appreciate another person's point of view because they know that person has wisdom. As one of the people the other day said, you, know, you guys hired us, you handpicked us to do the job, um, but you know we want you to show that you actually are listening to us as distinct from rejecting every idea. And that's the other thing. What's the pattern of acceptance versus rejection of ideas that you have? Go ask your staff that. There's 11 more of these. Uh, if you want more, then let's have a chat about it. This is what we do. We love helping leaders. We love helping leaders open up the team to get even more ideas and wisdom, build more trust, make it safer. Of course, it means that it's the organization is getting the best out of its people instead of shutting them down. If you want to lead your best life, then become a better listener. Want to help with this? reach out. Let's help you. Um, We've got a whole range of tools and drills to help you, particularly as a leader, senior leaders in particular, CEOs, managing directors, chairman of the board, um, department heads, touch base. This is what we specialize in. Thanks for listening. Lee Farnell, lead your best life. (music) 